Hello and welcome back to Like Maria. Today I'm going to talk to you about Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. I'm going to talk very specifically about the links with the imagery associated with the crucifixion. So after today you'll know lots more about how we can interpret the allusions to the crucifixion in Waiting for Godot. Just like Maria, please like and subscribe. So I'm going to divide this into three sections. First of all, we're going to talk about the symbolism of the tree. Secondly, the allusion to the specific biblical story of the crucifixion made by Vladimir. And thirdly, the overall imagery associated with the journey of suffering and waiting in the play. So starting off with the tree. In the initial stage directions, we have a country road, a tree, evening. Now, looking at this symbol of a tree, it can mean many things in relation to Christianity, but I'm going to concentrate on how it specifically relates to the cross that Christ was crucified on. First of all, in Christian tradition, we have the idea of the wood of the cross and the tree being very closely associated. Sometimes in hymns, for example, you hear about the sacred tree or the blessed tree on which hung the body of Christ. So the cross and the tree are very closely associated. And indeed, I think some people believe that probably the um, cross that Christ was crucified on was a very roughly hewn piece of wood that almost still looked like a tree, not the sort of um, tailored cross that you see on crucifixes in churches. So there is a very visceral connection between a tree and the wood of the cross. Secondly, and this is particularly where Beckett is concerned, he was very concerned that he could help design the tree. He wanted a very particular tree for the first performance, so much so that he went to Giacometti, the artist, and asked him to produce the tree. Now, if you see a picture of this tree used in the first performance, you will see that it's very spindly, but also that it has quite horizontal branches that echo the idea of a crucifix or a cross. So for me, the tree in the set of Waiting for Godot already sets us in mind of a crucifix very visually. It also has connotations with death because early on in the play, Estragon and Vladimir talk about maybe they should hang themselves. So the tree is early on associated with death. So all in all, this symbol, very visual symbol on the stage, which is referred to in the dialogue very early on, reminds us about the crucifixion. And these it kind of overshadows um, the play. It's always there. It is an ever present association with death and the crucifixion of Christ. Secondly, very early in the play, Vladimir alludes to the biblical story of the two thieves. He very specifically talks about this quite extensively to Estragon. Initially, he is deep in thought and Estragon is, as usual, faffing about with his shoes. And then Vladimir says, one of the thieves was saved. It's a reasonable percentage. And he goes on to ponder the story of the two thieves. Now, this story that he's alluding to can be found in Luke chapter 23, round about verse 32, and all the other Gospels as well. It refers to the idea that Christ was crucified alongside two thieves who have traditionally been called the good thief and the bad thief. And the reason for this is that as they were all being crucified, the bad thief said to Christ, if you are really the Christ, surely you can save us. The good thief on the other side says, we have done wrong, but he has not. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus turns to the good thief and says, today you shall be with me in paradise. So we have there that story from the gospel that Vladimir calls on very early in the play. And it reminds us of the crucifix, of the tree, of the setting on Calvary when Christ was crucified. 
It reminds us of the idea and the notion of being saved. One of the thieves was saved. And this is something that runs throughout the play. Vladimir constantly thinking about when Godo might become and the potential to be saved from their situation. Vladimir also elaborates on this and looks at the statistics of the gospel. He gets some ideas wrong as well. Um, and he's pondering on this notion, but he clearly kind of sees them as being almost in a crucifixion state, that they are perhaps being crucified along with Christ, but one of them will be saved. And it can't escape our notice that one of the two will be saved. And there's two of them, Estragon and Vladimir. So I think this is really important to unpick and think about at the early stages of the play. The other idea I wanted to refer you to in terms of this crucifixion scene is the whole idea of carrying a cross and a burden. So in Christian ideology, we have Christ as coming to the world to save people from the sin brought into the world by Adam. And Christ must suffer because of this and carry a burden very physically at the end of his life, the cross. Now, carrying a burden is quite prominent in the play. We have, for example, Lucky carrying his burden and being sort of chained in slavery and suffering. We have Estragon, who carries this burden of the problem with his feet, the problem with his memory, and is beaten at some stages in the play. And Vladimir carries the burden, carries the burden of the responsibility he feels for Estragon. And he also suffers with some insecurities and anxieties. And he also suffers with his prostate. So there are lots of examples in this play of humans being burdened, carrying their own cross. And you'll find that this is very common in Irish Catholicism of the early 20th century people talking about carrying their own cross, we've all got a cross to carry. The idea in Catholicism that if we suffer now and power through the problems and um, act with stoicism, we will then be rewarded in the afterlife. Now, I want to give you a quote um, from a really useful place to go when you're looking at Samuel Beckett. And this is John Calder's book, The Philosophy of Samuel Beckett. And he refers to this exact thing that uh, he's talking specifically about the way of the cross and the response that Beckett has to that part of the gospel. He refers to a document that's in the Beckett collection in Austin, Texas. And he says, there is a thinly disguised account of the Via Dolorosa depicting Christ with his cross on the way to execution. The author's empathy with the subject is clear. So there he's saying that Samuel Beckett has written some passages about Christ's experience of the way of the cross, the Via Dolorosa, and that Beckett is really empathising with Christ's suffering. Now, I think here what we can take away from this document is that Christ and his suffering is a big part of what Samuel Beckett is trying to explain. Not necessarily Christ's personal suffering, but the suffering of people in the world, the, the continual um, treadmill of human suffering and the human condition, and perhaps also the Christian condition and the suffering that people endure to be part of the Christian tradition. So that, I think that's a really useful place to go and look at these ideas. In conjunction with this idea of suffering, I've just pulled out a few quotes for you that really pin down this suffering. Vladimir towards the end of the play reflects, was I sleeping while the others suffered? So he's specifically using that word and saying that this experience that we've witnessed as an audience has shown people suffering. Vladimir um, is often talking about resuming the struggle and I resumed the struggle. He resumes the song at the beginning of Act 2. There is this idea of over and over again he is resuming and struggling. 
And of course, we could relate this to the myth of Sisyphus and Camus. Estragon often is struggling with something and generally it's his shoes. He's trying to get them on or pull them off or sort out his feet. So I think throughout there are these images of suffering that relate to the suffering endured by people um, in the world and in fact that it is the human condition. But I think more specifically we can relate this back to the idea of the way of the cross and people carrying their own crosses and this crucifixion is ever present in the play. The pain of crucifixion but also perhaps the hope of after that suffering something good will come. So please like and subscribe and also explore the channel to see my other videos on Waiting for Godot. Thanks for listening. Cheerio.